Thank you so much for coming. Sorry we were, we were running a little bit late, but we just wanted to make sure everybody got in and had an opportunity to take a, advantage of this wonderful experience. So I first want to say that you know we, we brought one here uh, for pretty much one specific reason. We have uh, some great student leaders here, and they attended a conference up in Boston, the National Student Leadership Association Conference, and they had the opportunity to see Juan. And they were just so inspired and so motivated by him. You know, we really wanted to bring him here to BCC to give, the, give uh, you guys the opportunity to also get inspired by that. And as many of you know, we had um, scheduled one to get to, to be here for the kickoff to college. Unfortunately, due to some travel issues, he wasn't able to make it. But we're so happy that he's here today. And, you know, you guys, you guys get the opportunity. So I just want to say this about Juan. The speaker today has been speaking for five years. Juan Doe is an author, speaker, and a recipient of the Verizon Wireless Motivators Award. In addition to speaking, Juan enjoys, I'm sorry, I can't read that word. Uh, being, oh, I'm sorry, uh, um, enjoys constantly being mistaken for a high school student. Something I never have done. Uh, recognizes the Beth Youth, youth Mentor by the internal examiner, please help me welcome Juan Doe. Hello, hello, hello. All right, let's give Michael a big round of applause for an amazing introduction. Come on in, folks. Come on in, guys. Just sit over here. Let me ask you guys, by show of hands, how many have friends that are talented, whether it's musically, athletically, artistically? OK. So it's my first year in college, and I began to realize all my new friends are amazingly talented. I mean, they could sing, dance, play a musical instrument, you name it, they could do it. And I slowly found myself jealous of them. Why? Because our school was putting together a talent show so that everyone could get to know each other. All of them could be part of the talent show, whereas I could not. Why? Because the only thing I was good at was I could wrestle. Now, don't get me wrong, wrestling takes a lot of skill, but it's not really a talent. Why? Because you can sing in public, you can dance in public, but you can't go outside and start grabbing random people <laughs> and begin wrestling them. That's awkward. So I decided I didn't want a talent, so I enrolled into an acting class. Anyone here ever taken drama or, or acting sometime in high school or college? Okay, wow. So, for those who haven't, I want to share with you, it is exceptionally difficult. Why? Because you're forced to step outside your comfort zone. Remember, one time after class, our teacher says, our next assignment is called the rock star assignment. And it's unlike anything we've ever done. At this point in class, my confidence is at an all-time high. I'm thinking, Professor Campbell, bring it. He then says, for this next assignment, you must choose a song you're not normally listen to. You must then choreograph a dance and then lip sync to a song in front of everybody. At that moment, I thought to myself, OMG, <laughs> what did I get myself into? So I'm walking back to my dorm. I'm stressed. I'm like, dude, there's no way I can do this. What if I embarrass myself? What if I look stupid? What if you make fun of me? All these what ifs start going through my head. But as we're walking back home, I come up with this brilliant idea. I'm thinking, I don't have to do this. I'm just going to figure out how many points it is worth. Skip the assignment, make up those points doing something else. So I get home, no longer stressed out. I casually walk in my room, find my syllabus, rock star assignment, 100 points. Underneath, though, in big, bold letters, it says you must do this assignment to pass the class. I realized in that moment I had a difficult choice to make. Was I going to pursue my goal, more likely embarrass myself so I can learn how to act, or was I going to let my fears, my doubts, other people's thoughts hold me back from achieving my goal? Now, the reason why I share this story with you is because I feel that's a lot like life. You may not want to learn how to act, but maybe here at Bristol Community College this upcoming school year, you want to get a 4.0 this upcoming semester. Maybe it's for you, it's getting a leadership position on campus this year. 
Or maybe for you, it's transferring to the school that you want or getting that dream job after you graduate. Whatever it is for you, as you pursue your goals, you will encounter OMG moments along the way. And I believe that your ability to succeed at the things that you want does not come down to your age, what's happening in your life, your background, your skin color, but rather it comes down to the choices that you make. And in our time together, I wanna to share with you what I believe are the three most important choices that will help you to succeed in college and in life. But before we get started, I wanna be upfront about two things. Number one, I want you to know I'm not here to pretend like I have all the answers. Why? Because I make mistakes all the time. And there's not a day that goes by where I don't learn something new. You see, my story began when I was a freshman in college, I was sitting in business calculus. And after an hour of learning about derivatives, I thought to myself, when am I ever going to use this in my life? How many have ever had that thought at one time or another while sitting in class? How many have had that thought more than once? How many just not going to raise their hands regardless of what I say? Okay, so for me, I was thinking, why aren't there classes to help me deal with the challenges I'm facing right now? Why aren't there, is there a class to help me figure out what I want to do in life? Why isn't there a class to help me figure out how to balance my academic and my social life? Why isn't there a class to help me figure out how not to be broke by the time I graduate? See, my thing is, I love education. Education's important, but you have to realize is that if you're not learning what you need to, you have to take things in your own hands. So for me, I got a lot of important classes that helped, taught me about different things, but I had to go out of my way to find the answers to the problems that I was going through. So I started reading different books, I started going up to the, to the grad school to hear the keynote speakers, and I started connecting with real world people to get internships, get real world experience in the fields that I was interested in. By the time I graduated, I beat out candidates who were older and more experienced than I was to land a role as a corporate trainer for the number one personal development company in the world. And I was traveling around the country doing consulting work with professionals who were two to three times my age, sharing business advice, but also personal advice for their lives. And after a year and a half of doing this, I realized that my passion was taking this information but sharing it in a way that young people can relate to for students to succeed in college and in life. So that's what I've been doing for the last five years. I've been fiercely committed to sharing practical advice that will help amazing individuals like yourself to succeed in college and in life. Second thing I want to be upfront about is I'm not here as a speaker to lecture to you. Why? Because it's not fun to be lectured to. Whether it's be by a parent or by a professor, it's not fun. I want you to know I'm more here as a friend. You know, like a funny, cool, amazingly good looking, and humble friend that's here to have a conversation with you. But to have a conversation, you need at least how many people? Help me out. Two. So there'll be times I'll be asking questions. In return, I'll be looking forward to a response. Why? Because if you're having a conversation with somebody, they ask you a question, it's rude if you just look and stare back. <laughs> Same thing applies in our time together as well. So if I ask you a question, feel free to be involved because I guarantee you, by you being involved in our conversation, not only will you have a lot more fun, but you'll take more out of our time together. So if you're up for making this less of a lecture, more of a conversation, do me a favor, raise your right hand for me and say aye. aye. Awesome. Now, I always like to get an idea of who we have here. I know it's a big mixture of different people. Uh, help me understand if this is, I know we have some high schoolers here, is that right? Gateway, right? Where are you at? There you go, don't be shy. Okay, do we have some first year students? Where are first year students at? All right. Second year students? All right, if you've been here, more uh, adults that are coming back for further education, where are you? All right, there we go, nice. So I'm curious, regardless of where you're at in life right now, right, where you're going to high school, going to college, first, second year, or your adult coming back, is it fair to say that life can be stressful, yes or no? Yes. And here's the thing, oftentimes you hear a person, a speaker, or different people say, hey, if you're going through a stressful time, the key is you need to always have a positive attitude. You guys heard that before? That is the worst advice ever. <laughs> Why? Because have you had one of those weeks where everything that could go wrong goes wrong? 
know what I'm talking about? You're busy, you're overwhelmed. You had a paper that you couldn't get to rather because you had other things to do because you're involved in school, because you're a parent. You're trying to cram this paper out. You pull an all-nighter. You wake up, you're exhausted. You go to class, you turn it in. You sit in class like a zombie. You go to the next class, you got your test score back. You realize you didn't do too well, so you're kind of bummed out. Go to the next class, boom, pop quiz. For real? <sighs> go to the next class, and you're just having a horrible day. You sit down for lunch. And one of your friends comes over, they notice you're having a, a bad day, and they say, hey, just cheer up, it's okay. Just gotta have a positive attitude. And you're heavy thinking, shut up. That is not helping my situation right now. And the challenge of that is oftentimes being positive, it's one, it's easier said than done. Number two is that oftentimes people will pretend that everything's okay, they put on a mask, but inside, they know they're going through a difficult time. I remember uh, one of my best friends came over and I knew something was wrong. Why? Because boom, door slams shut. Walks in my room, books in his hands, he huffs, puffing, takes his books, he launches against the wall. I look back, I'm like, Chris, are you okay? He says, I'm fine. <laughs> Obviously you are. <laughs> and as he's trying to convince me that everything's okay, I notice on the ground, his cell phone broken in half. I'm thinking, if that's what you do when you're feeling fine, let me know when you're feeling awesome. Because I don't want any of my stuff near you. And as we're talking, I figure out that what he's stressed about is things he's going with his parents, with his girlfriend. He had a lot of things on his plate. And the challenge of that is he's trying to be positive, but inside he knew that he was going through difficult times. And for me, rather than trying to be positive, because as you all know, life is challenging. Right? Whether you have kids, you're coming back, you're working a full-time job, or you're starting off fresh here, and this is a new experience for you going to community college. Life's challenging. And rather than trying to always have a positive attitude, I think it's important that you choose to have the right attitude. What that means is when life happens, acknowledge things as they are. Right? If you're having a stressful time at school, be stressed out. If you have no idea what you want to do after you graduate, it's okay. If you're frustrated about that, be frustrated. Why? Because when you're overwhelmed, you're stressed, and we ignore the problems, that's when bigger problems occur. And I think a great example is that we're all like soda cans. What happens is that life shakes us up. You might be going through a rough semester, so things are happening personally. You might be doing well in certain classes that you want to. And what happens is when life shakes us up, we build this tension inside. And oftentimes, people pretend that things are positive, they hold these emotions inside, and just like a soda can, if you don't release that carbonation, what happens is that eventually, at a certain point, it'll blow up. So that's why it's important where whatever you're feeling, acknowledge how you feel. Don't ignore what you're feeling, whether it's positive or negative. After you acknowledge how you feel, don't make it worse than it is. Oftentimes, I know for me, things are going wrong. It's so easy to blow things out of proportion. You guys know what I'm talking about? You think of like the worst case scenario and sometimes it doesn't even happen. So don't waste your emotional energy doing that. Acknowledge things how they are. Don't make it worse than it is. And number three, do something about it to change your situation. So for example, how many of you are concerned about finding a job by the time you graduate? Show of hands. Okay, I wanna share with you the key. One of the most important things that will help you is gaining real world experience. I'll give you an example. Think about when you got your driver's license. How many tests did you take? Two, right? You have a written test and you have a driving test or a practical test. If you ace your written tests but fail your driving test, do you get your license, yes or no? No. no? no. Guess what? It's the same thing with life. It's important that you do well in school. That's critical. But in addition, you have to get real world experience. It's volunteering, it's being involved in student activities or different clubs and programs you have on campus. It's getting internships. Because what it does is that that gives you the real world driving experience so that you can ace your interview and get the job. You guys follow me? Absolutely. Cool, so here's the thing. I know a lot of people talk about attitude. We all know it's important. Here's the challenge though. Everyone talks about attitude, but no one shows you how to change your attitude when you're going through a difficult time. So I want to share with you a technique that you can use today 
From now on, anytime you're feeling overwhelmed, to change your attitude. The technique, it's called changing the radio station. Imagine this, it's the weekend, school's over, you're going out with your friends, you're looking good, you jump in your car, guess what? Your favorite song is on the radio. What do you do? Turn it up. Some you start singing, some you start dancing, you're feeling good, but then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the song ends. And this horrible, annoying, wax song comes on the radio and kills the mood. What do you do now? Change the station. Well, here's the thing, whether you know it or not, we all have radio stations up here. Oftentimes, though, it plays wax songs. <laughs> you can't do that because you're not smart enough. You can't do that because you're too young, because you're too old, because you're not popular enough, because you're not something enough. And unfortunately, we're never taught how to change that song in our radio station. You see, for me growing up, my wax song was that I was never good enough. And the problem with this is that my self-esteem was based on how I compared to everyone else. So no matter how well I did in school, there's someone that had a, a higher GPA. No matter how involved I was in school, there was someone else more involved than I was. And for me, I came from a family that escaped the Vietnam War. And, and coming over here, overseas, growing up as a kid, all I wanted to do was to make a lot of money so I'd take care of my parents. But the challenge with me was everything I did, I always fell short. And I reached a point where I'm thinking, if I'm never gonna succeed, why try? And I remember there's different parts in my life through college and post-college where I was so depressed where I wanted to commit suicide. But what changed it was I found a professor that really cared. And this professor reached out to me and helped me to realize that that whack song in my head, that negative self-talk, wasn't true. The reason why I share this with all of you is because we all have wax songs. Your song may be something related to your personal life, with the people you care about. It may be a song about doing well in school, you getting that job you want, you transfer that college you want. Whatever it may be, we have this negative self-talk going through our heads. And I realized that these wax songs are written by something that happened in our past. Maybe someone said something to you, maybe it was a mistake you made, Maybe it's a setback you experienced. And here's the thing. Some of you have gone through things that you've never should have ever gone through in life. And if that's the case, I'm really sorry that you had to go through that experience. But what I want you to understand is that your past does not determine your future. The mistakes you make don't define who you are as a person. And your setbacks does not determine your success. Because what I've realized is that your biggest breakdowns in life can provide you with your biggest breakthroughs in life as long as you decide to change that wax song. So the next time you're feeling overwhelmed, you're feeling stressed out, you have that negative self-talk going through your head, this is what I want you to do. You're gonna say, hold up, that is whack. <laughs> Some of you are looking around the room right now, you're thinking, uh, no, Juan, that was whack. <laughs> I know it looks silly, but it works. Reason why it works, two reasons. Number one, it's so silly, it makes you laugh. <laughs> Let me ask you, when you laugh, do you feel better, yes or no? Yes. And here's the thing, when we're stressed out, we're overwhelmed, we only can focus on the problem. But when you're laughing, you feel better. And when you feel better, you're able to think clearer and make better choices than when you're stressed out. Second reason why it works, it is so random, it will make you temporarily forget about what's stressing you out. For example, have one of those days you're stressed out in class, you're sitting down for lunch, but as you're sitting down, you notice that cute girl or guy for one of your classes. As you're talking with one of your friends, you can't help realize, but your head is slowly moving over so that you can appreciate the beauty 
that is in front of you. And your friend's talking, you don't hear nothing, you're just staring at this person. Eventually your friend hits you in the shoulder, you're like, what? They're like, so what's stressing you out? You're like, oh, I'm sorry, I totally got distracted. What were we talking about? Ever happened anybody here, show of hands? For those who are raising your hands, thank you for your honesty. For those who didn't, you're liars. So here's the thing, when you say hold up, that is whack. That helps change your radio station in real life to distract you from what's stressing you out. But what's important is after you change the radio station, just like in your car, you want to make sure you play a new song, a song that you like. So how it looks like in real life is you say hold up, that is whack, because then you give yourself a reason why you can overcome that challenge. This is why this is important is even though I don't know all of you personally, I know you've gone through incredible challenges in your life and you've overcome them. And what's interesting is that when we're stressed out, we can, our minds can only focus on the problem at hand. Think about the last time when you got a ticket, you didn't do well in a class, you got in an argument with someone you cared about. You're just so stressed out in that moment. And the same thing is when we're going through challenges, we're focusing only on the moment. And the thing is, you've gone through challenges, you've overcome them, but we tend to forget in that moment. So when you say hold up, that is whack because it distracts you from that current moment so you can go back into your long-term memory and to remember all those times where you've handled similar challenges like that before. You guys follow me? So you guys say, hold up, that is whack, because give yourself a reason. I'll give you an example from my life. I remember there's this girl I was interested in. I wanted to go ask her out. So as I'm walking to ask this girl out, I all of a sudden stop. Why? Because all of a sudden, all these whack songs start going through my head. Juan, what if she says no? Juan, what if she says no and your friends see you? Juan, what if she says no, your friends see you, then they make fun of you? So all of a sudden I got nervous, I got scared. So I realized this, so what did I do? I had to remove myself from the situation. I stepped back and I was like, hold up, that is whack, because I got swag. <laughs> I said this out loud, I was like, uh-huh, yeah I do. But here's the thing, what happens is it helped me go back to my long-term memory. What's important though is that when you have a whack song stuck in your head, like a One Direction song, <laughs> if you only change the station one or two times, it's still going to be stuck in your head. She said never in your wildest dreams, and we danced all night. Don't pretend like you don't know the lyrics. So here's the thing, you change the station, but you have to keep changing the station. So for me, I was like, hold up, that is whack because I'm the bomb. Hold up, that is whack because I eat proms like this for breakfast. Hold up, that is whack because I'm a lean, mean, sexy machine. <laughs> and here's the thing, when I said this out loud, you become what I call lethally confident. This type of confidence where let's say you're working on a group project in class, and all of a sudden all your group mates are all stressed out and you're looking around, move, get out the way. I got this. That's lethal confidence. But here's the thing though. This is what I want you to realize is oftentimes, I know it looks silly, but it works. Why? Because Oftentimes throughout our lives, we beat ourselves up. Oh man, I'm so stupid. Why did I say that? How did I make that mistake again? We take all this energy and we beat ourselves up. With this technique, all we're doing is we're taking the same energy and just using it to remind ourselves of why we can handle issues in our life, why we can handle challenges and why we can achieve the goals that we want and we set for ourselves. But here's the thing, rather than just talking about it, I want you to try it out for yourself and see if it works for you. So this is what's gonna happen. Right now, I want to think about what's a whack song playing your head leading up to the semester? What's that negative self-talk you have going through your head about your personal life, about your academic life, or your professional life? This is what I want you to do. I want you to repeat after me. Hold up! Hold up. That, that is whack. Is whack. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. Let me ask you. Be real with me now. Could you have done better, yes or no? Yes. Okay, important follow-up question. Why didn't you? 
Man, Juan, I wasn't ready. It's too early. Juan, I don't know half these people in the room. If I do this, I might look weird. I'm trying to make friends and not lose friends. Here's the thing. My guess, it really stems off of one thing. And it's, what will other people think about me? Will I be judged? And that's something we all encounter. But here's the thing. I had a chance to talk with the administration and the staff here. And what's incredible is they really are passionate about all of your success. They want you to succeed, not only in school, but in life. And I've heard some amazing stories about different people on campus, and it's really inspiring. And I know that whatever challenges you've gone through to overcome them, that you had to do big things in life to handle it. And what I know is that if you've handled difficult things in your life, doing this exercise, total breeze. So here's the thing, I'm gonna give you a second chance you to do your actual best, okay? But here's the thing though, like think about a scale from one to 10, 10 being you're committing full out, you give up all your energy, loud as you can. That's what I want you to give for this exercise. You follow me, yes or no? Yes. I'm gonna be so loud so that people around the art center be like, what is happening there? All right, so I'll give you a second chance, but here's the thing, for this technique to work, there's two important steps. Step one, without talking, stand up. Step two, you must include the hand motion. I mean, serious, this is critical for this to work. Bonus step, bonus step, insert attitude, all right? And ladies, I know you know what I'm talking about, okay? All right, so we're gonna do this again, all out, level 10. Are you ready, yes or no? Yes. I said, are you ready, yes or no? Yes. So repeat after me. Hold up. Hold up. That yes. is whack yes. because, because I, am I am the bomb. The bomb. Hold up. I said, hold up. Hold up. That, that is whack. Is because because I, got I got swag. Give yourselves a hands and have a seat. So, let me ask you, did that feel silly, yes or no? Okay, it did feel silly, but check this out. i rather, well, here's the thing. It did feel silly, but do you feel different, yes or no? Do you have more energy, you more in a good mood, yes or no, yes. before you walked in? So here's the thing. I'd rather feel silly for a brief moment than rather be concerned and stressed out what people think about me and then continue being stressed out. You follow me? So anytime you're feeling overwhelmed and stressed out, boom, hold up. That is whack. And you guys can share it around campus, all right? So here's the thing. What I love... Um, most about what I do is not speaking, but it's traveling the country, connecting with amazing individuals like yourself. So I want you to know, um, I'll be here afterwards for a couple minutes. If you want to chat, say hello, please make sure you come by, say hello to me. But when I look at college, one of the best things about college is that everything's laid out for you. Literally, you come into college, you want to you set a certain, you want a certain associate's degree, you have step by step what classes you need to take. Unfortunately though, that's not like the real world. Right? When you're going through life, there's no syllabus to tell you what to do next in your career path. There's no study guide to go off of to help you to pass the many tests that life will give you. And the reason why I think a lot of people struggle in the real world is because they don't have a GPS. They don't have specific goals that have a meaningful purpose and multiple strategies to achieve them. So imagine this. Let's say we go and hang out afterwards and say, hey, let's meet up at Starbucks in Fall River. And rather than me give you directions, I said, oh, just type in Fall River Starbucks into your GPS. How many Starbucks will pop up in your GPS? A little or a lot? Oh, you guys are having here? Wow, that did not work. Okay, let's redo this. Dunkin' Donuts in Fall River. You guys have Starbucks, really? Oh, okay. <laughs> so, Dunkin' Donuts, Fall Rivers, will little or a lot of locations pop up? A lot. A lot. So here's the thing. 
this is a point. Just like life, a lot of times is we'll say, I want to get good grades in school. I want to get a good job. What does a good job mean to you? Is it making a certain amount of money? Is it where you're traveling? Is it certain? <laughs> I know what your goal is. So here's the thing: is those are all vague goals. Good job making a lot of money. Well, how much is a lot of money? See, it's saying a lot of money, getting good grades. It's like saying, hey, let's meet up at Dunkin' Donuts and Fall Rivers. You guys follow me? Because what happens is your GPS was like, there's a gazillion different locations. I don't know where to go. That's the same thing with life is when you're so vague about what you want, is there's so many options. As you guys know, when you have too many options, it's so overwhelming to choose one. So then eventually we don't choose any. So it's the same thing with life. So what I want to share with you is whatever goals you have, make sure they're specific. Do you want to have a 3.5 this upcoming semester? Do you want a job within the city, within a certain industry, with a certain company? By being more specific in what you want, then your mental GPS can create an actual plan to get there. Otherwise, if you are vague, then all of a sudden you're going to feel overwhelmed and feel lost. And rather than being in the driver's seat of your life, you're going to feel like you're on the passenger side. In addition to that, what's important is you make sure you pursue your goals in life and not someone else's. Reason why is that so many people I come across, they're like, well, why are you doing this? Why did you choose to go to this school or this major? this degree and there's a wall because my friends said I should or because my parents want me to. And the, that's the biggest mistake is because when you start going after goals, not that you want but what other people want for you, is once you achieve them, everyone's happy for you except yourself. So my hope is that you choose to pursue goals that you want because in doing so, not only will it make you happier, but because you're pursuing those things, you're going to be inspiring so many people that you may not even know. I figured out that I wanted to speak when I was a junior in high school. Why? I attended this leadership conference and the speaker impacted not only my life, but 300 other people in the room as well. For me, I was passionate about helping people. And I saw speaking was a way to help a lot of people in the same amount of time it took just to help one person. So all throughout high school and then to college, that's all I focused on. In 2008, I uh, finished a book called Succeeding in the Real World, What School Won't Teach You. And I held this book launch at the University of Washington where I live, which is the largest four-year university. While there, I didn't know about the schools, so I had all these help promote these events for me. And everyone was so encouraging, so helpful, but also I get this one email from this economics professor. He says to me, come on Juan, you're 22 years old, what do you know? What can you share with my students that I could not teach them? All of a sudden, that moment, all these whack songs start coming up in my head. Maybe he is right. Maybe I'm too young. Maybe I'm not good enough. And I was pretty bummed out. Fortunately, though, I had a mentor that called, and he says, Juan, I'm sorry that this person said this to you, but I want to share with you a story. He says, Juan, I want you to imagine that you're in elementary school again. And you're running around during recess, boom, all of a sudden you run into this kid. And this kid, he has a newspaper in his hand. And in front of the newspaper, it says, child killed. And as you look at this newspaper, it slowly moves down. And you make eye contact with this kid. And he says, when I grow up, I'm going to eradicate child slavery. My mentor says to me, Juan, what do you say in return? And I thought to myself, considering we're in elementary school, Wow, that's cool. You want to go play kickball now or go to recess? I and mean, what do you say? But here's the thing. This kid, he was criticized. He was made fun of for having this vision at 12 years old. But when you fast forward 18 years later, Craig Kilberger has the largest nonprofit worldwide called Free the Children, helping children educate children on issues like this. He has the Dalai Lama, the Prime Minister of Canada, backing up on his cause. He has best-selling books. He was on Oprah. And these events all across the country called We Day that inspires the young generation to realize that you're not the leaders of tomorrow, that you're the leaders of today. And my mentor said to me, Juan, Craig was made fun of, but he had a unique passion, he had this goal that he wanted to make a difference in this world. And because of this goal that he had for himself, he's inspiring millions of people worldwide. My mentor says to me, Juan, I'm really sorry that you got this nasty message from this professor. But I want you to understand is that you have a unique gift to share, a gift that can inspire millions of students worldwide.
And whether you know it or not, they are depending on you. You see, I may not know you personally, but what I do know is that you have a unique gift to share. You have goals that are in your heart, things that you want to aspire to achieve and things that you want to become, things that you want to experience and things you want to give back. Whether it's in the field of teaching and music and art and business and science, whatever it may be, you have a unique gift to share that can impact people, not only here in the Fall Rivers community, here at Bristol Community College, but possibly around the world. My hope is that you choose to pursue your goals, your passions, because in doing so, not only will you be happier, but there's so many people that you don't know that are depending on you. Main thing, after you set clear on the goals that you want, make sure you have a meaningful purpose to actually achieve them. A lot of people get confused, like, Quan, this is something I want to do, this is what I'm, this is my passion, but I have no idea how to get there. One thing I realized really quickly, it's not figuring out how you achieve it, but why is it important to you? What would it mean to you to achieve this goal? How would you feel if you to experience this thing that you always wanted to do? Because knowing why you want something, your purpose is more important than knowing how. You see, I guarantee all of you have done something, like worked at a job that you did not enjoy. Is that fair to say yes or no? Yes. But I guarantee you, you worked at this job for a certain reason. Because you wanted to support your kids. Because you want to save money for that car. You want to save money to go to college. Whatever it is, you have a meaningful purpose to get you through those difficult times. And that's why knowing your reason, your purpose in doing something is so important. Because when life happens, that's what helps remind you to get through those difficult moments. See, when I had my book launch, I didn't know anybody at the University of Washington. I attended a university in Southern California. And when I went up there, I didn't know anybody. So people were helping promote. And I put $1,000 on my credit card for an art center like this. I didn't know anybody at the school. So I'm thinking, now we're two months away from the event. There's 10 people signed up. This room seats 700. This is going to be pretty embarrassing. So I remember I was so stressed out, it was like 3 in the morning, as any responsible person would do, I totally ignored my problems and I went to Facebook. <laughs> I was looking on Facebook, seeing what people were doing, and then I see this note on Facebook and it says 21 days till graduation. I click on it and I'm reading this note and this girl is talking about how 21 days till graduation, 21 days my friends are going to walk, get their degrees, and I'm not. And she says, the reason why is because somehow I screwed up my life. I was doing a writing start where I was ahead two years in credit and somehow I fell two years behind. I sit at home sometimes thinking how my parents are ashamed of me, they're probably embarrassed. And I'm thinking, where did I go wrong? And as I kept reading this note, my heart went out to this girl. And by the time I got to the end of the note, I realized that the person who wrote it was my cousin. I had no idea that she's going through this experience. But in that moment, I got so mad, so livid, because in that moment, I remember what my purpose was in doing this book launch. I went through those experiences. She was going through it. And I know millions of students worldwide had had difficult experiences like this before. And in that moment, that's when I got fired up. Eventually, we were able, without no connections, we had three newspapers cover us, a TV station, we had $6,000 of donations that was given, filled up the room. It was an amazing event. But what made the difference, what got me through the difficult times, was knowing what's my purpose? Why am I doing this? So when you get clear on your specific goals, you have to make sure why is this important to me? What is going to get me through those difficult times? Because that's inevitable. What are my reasons that will help me push me through those times so I'm pursuing my goals? Last thing is make sure you have multiple strategies to achieve them. Think about if you're going to campus and all of a sudden you're supposed to go straight but then there's construction being done so you can't go straight and you have to take a left and you're using your GPS. What happens to your GPS? Recalculates, right? So you take that left, you keep on going and you're supposed to take another left but all of a sudden there's a car accident so you can't take a left, you have to go straight. What happens to your GPS? Recalculates. That's the same idea we have to have with life. 
because as you guys know, you have certain plans in life and things don't always go according to plan. And that's why you have to have multiple ways to achieve your goal. Okay, for example, a lot of people are like, oh, Juan, I want to be healthier. You know, so I'm going to run seven days a week. Problem with that, you run seven days a week, what if you twist your ankle? Now I said, oh, you know, I'll, I'll heal up, I'll take care of it. You know, I'll run a couple days. Those couple of days turn to next week. That next week turns to next month, and all of a sudden it's the end of the year, and you're setting a new New Year's resolution, right? So you have to set yourself up to win. So for example, if you're having a tough time with a certain class, think about whatever way you're studying, it's maybe not working right now. So maybe you gotta go visit the professor. That's one strategy. Maybe you need to go out and get some tutoring, another strategy. Maybe you gotta do like a study group with a couple people in your class that you really respect that are doing well. That's another strategy. So whatever goals you set for yourself, set yourself up to win by brainstorming different ways that you can go about achieving it. You follow me? Hello? Okay. So here's the thing. Uh, it was funny where a couple years back I was at a leadership conference. I was with these high school students. And I, I met with these students throughout the year and Michelle Obama was coming to the hotel. They said to me, Juan, we want to get into this luncheon with Michelle Obama. I said, fantastic, let's do it. So I shared with them, GPS, what's your GPS? So what's your specific goal? Juan, we have to get into the luncheon. We can't like look through the cracks, it doesn't count. We have to actually physically get in. Fantastic. What's your purpose? Juan, this would be monumental. She's someone that inspires us and this is something we remember for the rest of our lives. Great. What's your strategies? Well, we figured that we'd ask the security guard if he let us in. If he says no, we're going to have Cynthia cry. All right, let's leave that crying as a plan C or D. Because the challenge was you need a background check five days in advance. It was completely sold out and it started in an hour. I told him, no problem. So we're brainstorming ideas. These two girls run off. After they run off, I get a call one hour later. Both girls are crying on the phone. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what did I do? They're crying. Eventually, when they stop crying, they said, Juan, we got tickets to see Michelle Obama. For those who don't believe me, I have a video of them right afterwards. Cynthia and Kira, why are you so excited? What just happened? How did you two do this? So the reason why I share that is it's pretty incredible what they did considering that they had to get in, started an hour, no connections, no security check, but they got a way to get in. And what's great is these two girls did it when they were in high school, now they're in college. They're doing amazing things where the girl that was all teary-eyed and crying, she uh... Does the present call and make sure that everything's going fine here. I'll call him back later. So with her, she's all teary-eyed and crying. She went to Washington State University. Um, she got an internship going to work for the U.S. Embassy in China. Um, now she's a sophomore. She got this huge Greek award because she's part of the Greek system. Out of 3,000 girls, she as a sophomore got the award out of everybody. Other girl, she got rejected from her dream school. And rather than saying, you know, this is the end of life, she just went to a different school, maximized her experience. She's very good at writing, so I saw this opportunity with USA Today College for writing, so I sent it to her. And anybody could submit, if you're interested in writing, you should go to USA Today College. She then wrote this article, consider she's a freshman, she's not even a journalism major. She then writes the story, and her article was not only selected, but it was the second most viewed article of the entire website. And the article was, I got rejected from my dream school and it was the best thing that ever happened to me. And she went, she, did, she went to Alaska where this company paid for everything to her to live there in the summer. And both of them are, are juniors in college now, doing amazing things. Reason why I share this story with you is because it's so easy, like, oh, that's so great, you know, whatever's happened in life, they've had a great upbringing, or it's because they're young, they're ambitious. That's all doesn't matter, because what they, they decide to have the right song in their head, right? They chose to have that radio station tuned to that right song. 
And it's just a remember to remind yourselves, whatever it's important to you is to pursue your passions and your goals because for me, no matter what, it's inevitable that you're gonna fail. And what I realized is the purpose of setting a goal is not to achieve it. The purpose of setting a goal is for you to stretch outside of your comfort zone and to do things you not normally do so that you can learn and become a better person. And if you achieve your goal, that's great. That's the cherry on top. Because a lot of people are so fearful, like what if I fail, what if I don't achieve this? I realize there's two risks in life. Either you have the risk of pursuing your goal, learning and, and falling short, or you have the risk of later on in life thinking, what if I would have tried that? So my hope is that you guys make sure you pursue your goals, specific goals, make sure you have meaningful purpose and multiple strategies to achieve them. Last thing I wanna share with you is the importance of building meaningful relationships. You know, there's a popular saying that success is not about what you know, it's about, and that's false. Don't get me wrong, relationships are important for your success. But just because you know someone doesn't mean that they're gonna help you. Think about how many friends you have on Facebook, how many people you have following on Twitter or Instagram, or how many connections you have on LinkedIn. Of those people, how many would be willing to lend you some money if you're going through a difficult time? How many would be willing to pull an all-nighter to help you finish that paper that you didn't get to? You see, just because you know someone doesn't mean they're gonna help you. What's important is rather than learn how to network, you need to stop networking and learn how to start connecting because that's a huge difference. Networking is saying, hey, how's it going? Meet somebody, what's your name, what's your major, getting a business card, whatever it may be, and not following up. Connecting is taking that extra step further. It's making a meaningful connection, not just learning about, let's say, why someone came to Bristol, but you know, it's cool that you chose that major, but what, what do you enjoy most about it? Learn about what their goals are, what their values. Simply put is networking is knowing someone, which you can, learn by Facebook stalking someone on their profile, or connecting is taking that time to genuinely get to know them. Because a lot, everything in my life I say is because of the relationships that I've built. When I worked for that company, the co corporate trainer straight out of college, is because of the connections I made. I sent in the most beautiful resume, cover letter, I had the former vice president of human resources for ARCO, top people, and Morgan Stanley, Merle Lynch look over my cover letter, had so many people look over it, but once I sent it in, I got no callbacks. But when I reached out to my connection within the company, the day he sent in my, my cover letter and my resume, I got a call back that same day. That's the power of relationships. What's key though, is that you gotta build meaningful connections. What that means is taking the time to genuinely get to know someone. Oftentimes you can see wherever I go, I look when I'm on an airport, I'm traveling, I sit down somewhere, college campus, you have people sitting next to each other, they don't talk to each other, they go on their phone, right? They start messaging their friends or doing something else. Or, you know, there's a perfect stranger that you have opportunity to connect with someone, it's just willing to step out of your comfort zone and make that connection. And the reason why it's so important is, not only does it help you professionally with getting jobs and getting things that you want in your professional life, but most importantly for me, I think it's important for your personal life. I went back and I told you where life is stressful. And I realized is that when you're going through a tough time, it's so hard to handle it yourself. And oftentimes we try to do that. I admit myself, I try to do everything myself. If I'm problems, it's cool, I'll handle it. But I realized is that everyone thinks I'm always excited, I'm always pumped up. But I go through challenges constantly. What gets me through is having great family and great friends. That's what makes the difference. You know, unfortunately, I met different people. I mean, I went to community college as well. I took summer school at community college. And for me, those were the best experience that I've had where if I rate my top five classes, where I went to a private university down in Southern California, it cost me $40,000 a year to go to, and a community college that took summer classes, I'd say my political science at a community college ranked within my top five classes out of all the classes I took at Fourier University. And the amazing thing is I made amazing connections, not only at four year, but also friends that went to community college. And these people, when I go through a tough time, I can lean on them. Like I said, we're all like soda cans and we need people in our lives that will invest in us. And I think the three most important relationships that you can make 
while here at Bristol Community College is one, get a mentor. Someone that you admire, that you look up to, that can guide you with your major, with your career path. Number two, make sure you have a good friend up here. Someone that's going through the challenges that you're going through that you can relate to, right? Because you might have someone that you admire but that doesn't understand your situation. Say if you have a parent, you have single, you know, you're a single parent with kids, find another person, single parent with kids, because then you can relate and connect to each other and lean on each other. So you have a mentor, you have a peer, then you need someone that you can mentor yourself. You have someone that you can guide and, and give back because it's about paying it forward. Those are the three most important relationships you can make. And my hope is that, I know, again, community college, all of you have your own lives, you go back home, is get connected to your campus. There's such amazing people here, faculty, administration, and staff, that want to help you to succeed. And here's the thing is that they're willing to do anything to move mountains to support you, but they don't know if you need help unless you reach out first. So make sure you connect, mentor, a peer, and so that you can mentor yourself. Now, as our time's winding down, I realized I never finished that story at the beginning. Remember the one with the rock star assignment for my acting class? You guys wanna know what happened? Yes. Ooh, I'm so convinced. <laughs> Do you wanna know what happened? Yes. Okay, so before I get to that, uh, a couple things. Um, number one is I always like to uh, carve out some time uh, to let you guys ask any questions that you may want because it's really not about me, it's about all of you. So there's some things I've covered, maybe not have covered, that you want elaboration on or you just want to ask general questions. So I'd like to open up the floor. Any questions you may have regarding anything I chat about in our short time or just anything in general. So any questions? Yes? Your rock star story, are you gonna finish it? Right, so question is, my rock star story, am I gonna finish it? You will find out in a couple minutes. Okay, yes? How did you pick your mentor? Question is, how did I pick my mentor? It's a combination of things where mentors, it's like when you just, you just feel like you're connected. You know what I'm saying? Do you have like people in your life like, wow, I just feel like I just gel with them? So for me, there's people that I get mentors that way, but also too, is that when you find someone you admire, I just reach out to them. I send them an email after I meet them, or I just connect with them, and I say, hey, would you mind if I took you out for coffee. And what happens is that, more than likely, they're gonna say yes. And when you take them out, I always offer to pay. They never let me pay because I was a student. And what happens is like, hey, do you mind if we stay in contact? And then majority of the time, they'll just say yeah. And a lot of my mentors in my life is simply me just asking, hey, you know, I really, I, this, is my, <laughs> this is my words, I say, I appreciate your pearls of wisdom. And uh, I just love to, to connect with you further, would you mind? Grab them if I grab you some lunch. And that's how, and the main thing is, just like any good friend, you just have to stay in contact. And what's cool is that all the mentors want is for you just to let them know how well you're doing. That's it. They don't care about money, none of that stuff. They just wanna know if you're doing well. So for me, I would encourage you, if you find people you admire, to say, hey, I really appreciate what you shared. Do you mind if we grab a cup of coffee or lunch? And that's where the beginning of the relationship begins. And then after that, you just say, hey, would you mind if we stay in touch? Other questions? Yes? Can you be my mentor? Question is, can I be your mentor? It's very good. If you uh, come down, chat with me afterwards, and I'll give you my information. If you want to stay in touch, definitely stay in touch with me. Cool. Yes? Uh, when it comes time in the future to actually call in a favor from the meaningful connections that you have made, mm -hmm. uh, just for everyone here, um, what would you recommend as the most appropriate way to ask someone to either give you a leg up or to give you a reference? Uh, mm -hmm. for a dream job or an entry level position? Great question. So the question is, God, let's say you make a meaningful connection and let's you say you want them to help you out. What's the best way to approach them in regards to having them write you a reference letter, letter of recommendation, or making a connection for you? This is powerful. This is important here. When you make connections with people, you can help connect with anybody. When you meet them, I focus on what can I do to help them. Okay, because when you help someone, no strings attached naturally they want to help in return so the idea is build it before you need it it's like the career center i hung out the career center don't wait until you're getting ready to graduate which a lot of people do right last semester right i need to find a job let me go to the career center no build it in advance so for me when i meet people i just generally try to get to know them and then i see in my head do i know anybody that can help them or 
For example, all of us have a certain passion or skill set. You have a certain hobby. Maybe you're into sports or you're into art or dance. When you meet people, those things, you can offer that and say, hey, I can help you with this. Or how can, you know, maybe we can do this experience together and take them for like a cool experience that they want to do. So all the time, we have opportunities to serve people. So my suggestion is when you build these relationships, find out what can I do to help them. For me, a lot of times when I meet like people who have families, I, I just generally want to just play with their kids. And if this, when like, if their kids like into superheroes, like I buy them like a, like a Batman figurine because I know the kids in a Batman. So it's those ways where I make a meaningful connection, right? And then when you're asked for the help, is when you build that relationship, and then you ask for help, they naturally want to help you because you become a friend. So the best way to think about it is think about how you treat your close friends. Treat every person you meet that way, and just be genuine and connect with them. And when you build that relationship, and you're just like, hey, you know, I'm. A, Considering a platform's job, would you mind helping me out? It's a no-brainer. They're gonna to want to help you out. So think about the relationships you have right now. You're getting ready. Take some time, just connect with them, and then, and then ask. Because the problem is when people usually meet each other, they're like, "Hey, can you help me with this?" And they have no relationship. Do you follow me? Does that help out? It yeah, does. Thank you. Yeah. Cool. Uh, one more question, because I know time's winding down. Any more? All right, cool. Not that. Not that. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's get to the rocks, man. Hurry up. Okay, so one quick thing, uh, two things. I want to acknowledge, um, share with you how you stay in contact with me, and acknowledge some people where, for me, as I mentioned to you, I absolutely love what I do. Not because of the speaking, but it's the part of just being able to connect with some amazing people with interesting stories. So. Um, if there's any way I can support you, please feel free to stay in touch with me. You can go to thatiswack.com. <laughs> thatiswack.com. If you go to there, you actually see a, a video replay of me doing my rock star dance. Also, you can get a free copy of my book, Succeeding Real World. It's a PDF copy. So make sure you go on there, log on in, and then you can follow me on Twitter. Um, I want to acknowledge a, a group of uh, people here where... You know, it's amazing where uh, this is a special community here, and it's just really cool to feel your guys' energy and be a chance to connect with all of you. But uh, I was supposed to come here in August. Um, I got stuck in Minnesota, and I couldn't come out for the orientation. I was bummed out, but I had an opportunity to come back this time. I'm very happy to have this chance to connect with all of you. And you have an amazing community of people, staff, administration, faculty that just genuinely care. And what I like to do is acknowledge these individuals. So I know we have Kathy, we have Steven, Michael. They help organize this, and I appreciate the opportunity. And any other administration and faculty here, I like to all of you to stand up, and for all of us to make some noise, give them a round of applause, give some love for the work that they do. All right. Rock star. Okay, so I decided, okay, after contemplating for a couple of days, I realized, you know what, I just got to do it. Not because I was going to fail, but I always tell people, don't let fear hold you back from pursuing what you want. It'd be very hypocritical of me if I didn't follow my own advice. So the random song that I chose was Hey Mickey. There's no song. Hey Mickey, you're so fine, you're so fine, you blow my mind. Hey Mickey. Hey Mickey. So that's the random song I chose. And I called my friend Janine up. I'm like, hey Janine, what's happening? She said, like, oh, I'm just studying. I said, hey, random question. Um, can I borrow your cheerleading outfit? <laughs> what? Sorry, let me rerun the story. I have this acting class and I chose the song Hey Mickey. I'm trying to get into character here. You're a cheerleader at school. Can you let me borrow it? She's like, um, okay, Juan, I'll let you borrow my cheerleading outfit as long as you promise me not to stretch it out. So Janine, I promise. <laughs> After I put on her skirt, I was like, oh my gosh, I better not try to put on the top. I tear that sucker in half. So I went to my closet. I grabbed a random shirt from my closet. And as I'm getting ready for the dance, I realize I don't know anything about cheerleading. So what do I do? 
I rent every single Bring It On movie and watch it. <laughs> so I'm getting ready to go. I'm sitting on the side, and my classmate finishes, and it's my turn. Professor Campbell's like, Juan, you ready? Man, ready as ever will be. <laughs> Hold on, Mr. Campbell, I forgot something. It's about to get real, folks. I hope you're ready. <laughs> It'll get real once I find the song. I got it, I got it. <laughs> uh, okay, where'd it go? So, quick story about the hair. Um, I started off with a black wig, and then someone's like, you know, that's funny, but if you got a blonde wig, it'd be much funnier. So I took that advice, and then I recently spoke at DeVry University. Um, so students there are from 18 to 50. And this person commented, like, wow, this is really great, but you gotta realize in the original music video with Tony, her hair was brown. So I realized that, but it's not nearly as funny as having a blonde wig. favor hold this up for me connect to the back and then just turn off when it's done Clap it up! So, after I do this, I realize that was the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. But, as I look back to that experience, I'm really glad I did it. And the reason why is because it taught me a lot about how to succeed in college and in the real world. Leading up to this assignment, I was so scared to do it. I was like, oh, just be positive, it's okay. Like, no, it's not okay. I'm about to wear a chilling outfit. 
And I realized in that moment, I don't have to be positive all the time. It's about having the right attitude. Because I can acknowledge that I'm scared. Don't make it worse than it is, but then do something about it to change my situation. For me, I had some people making fun of me, but I'm like, you know what? Who cares what they think? This is about my goals. I'm not going to turn what I want to do based on other people. So I was clear what my GPS was. When I learned how to act, I knew my reason because this is something outside of my comfort zone. It forced me to become a better person, to challenge me. And I had my multiple strategies with the music video, with the movies, and my friend to help prepare for the class. Lastly, as I did have friends that joked around with me, they're like, dude, it's kind of silly, but they're really encouraging because they're like, dude, you killed it. <laughs> and I never would have done stuff, I could never do something like that. So my hope as you guys go into the semester at Brisk Community College is that you remember that your ability to succeed, to pursue your goals, whatever it may be, your ability to succeed doesn't come down to what's happening in your life, your skin color, how old you are, how young you are, but rather, it's your choices that you make every single day about your attitude when things happen in your life. And my hope is that you remember is that when things are going wrong is that you choose to have the right attitude. Right? You're having that wax on your head. You need to change the station by saying... And along the way, when you're getting lost throughout, if you're getting lost throughout the semester, remember, what is my GPS? Whatever you do, whether you're in class, whether you're volunteering, whether you're doing an internship, what is my GPS? By asking what's your specific goal, what's your purpose and multiple strategies to achieve your goal, it's going to help you to steer your car in life versus being in the passenger seat. And last is make sure you make meaningful connections. When you're around campus, connect with someone that you don't know. Put down your phone. Stop tweeting. Stop inviting people to Candy Crush. Stop talking to people. <laughs> right? Stop networking. Start connecting. Again, my name is Juan Doe. It was an absolute pleasure being here. Come by afterwards, say hello. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Juan Doe. Keep it going. Keep it going. Thank you all for coming. I'm sure you, you're going to take a lot out of this.